going to speak on is uh, do we have a climate crisis? And I'm sure you've heard a lot about this in, uh, um, well, in newspapers, magazines, and as even mentioned in the uh, uh, presidential debate that was held last night. Um, so what we're going to look at is what is this all about? Um, who are the organizations behind that? There's, you may have heard of the UN IPCC. Uh, that's the, the, the main um, organization that puts out documentation to try to tell us that uh, climate change really is uh, something we need to be concerned about. And what I'm going to look at is the, some of the science behind that. Why are they saying that? And uh, we'll look at some of the projections, predictions that scientists and from that organization have made. Uh, this and this is, this is really bad. And I'm sure you've heard, if we don't do something about this in the next 10 years, we're toast. So I'm going to look at those claims, and then I'm going to look at the evidence uh, for those claims. Are those claims true? Should we be concerned, or should we, don't we need to be concerned? So let's go to the, uh, the slides then. And um, these graphs here in this, this title slide give you some idea of what the issues are. And uh, I'll be explaining those slides as I go through the talk. So, oops. Hang on. Wait a minute, I can't get to slide two. Uh, let's see. Okay, let me start this again here. Okay, so slide number two, what I'm go these are the topics I'm gonna cover. First of all, what does the Bible say about this issue? And uh, then I'm gonna look at the global warming claims that these scientists have to make, and, uh, and then some of the facts behind their claims, and then what they mean by greenhouse effect and greenhouse gases. How do they play into this? The two major organizations that are gonna, uh, I'm gonna talk about here, I mentioned the UN IPCC, which stands for Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. There's another group called the NIPCC, which is Non-Government, Non-Governmental International Panel on Climate Change. And uh, they have investigated the claims made by the IPCC and uh, refute many of those. So they, they are scientists. They're all uh, um, climate scientists that have looked at these claims. And uh, we'll, look, we'll see what they have to say. So after the introduction, um, I'm going to go into 16 key issues which come up when we talk about climate change. And I, I want to make a note here. I'm going to go through some of these slides pretty fast, but all of these slides will be put up on our website so you can look at them if you want to look at them in a little bit more detail. First of all, the biblical mandate. You may be familiar with these verses. They are right from Genesis 128. We are commanded to be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Then the second most important verse in that chapter is Genesis 8:22. While the earth remains, seed time, harvest, cold and heat, summer, winter, day, night shall not cease. In other words, we are... Uh, told that we don't really don't need to be concerned about the seasons. We have seasons. God gave us seasons, and uh, we're going to have them all the time. And uh, then the third thing I want to mention is that whatever we are told by the UN IPCC, um, these are scientists telling us some things that we should be concerned about. I say, as a scientist, we need to test everything that they claim to be true, whether it is good. So with that, let me just jump right in. Uh, the uh, IPCC makes it a very hard claim saying the climate is changing, we're getting warmer, 
And this is something uh, that we should be very concerned about and it's mainly caused by human activity. That's what they would claim. And they said, if we don't do something uh, by the end of this century, 2100, we will have an average temperature go up by about five degrees, very, very warm. Uh, and that's centigrade. They also say that if we don't do something, the Arctic ice cap will disappear. You know, you have uh, ice in the winter and the Arctic, and it comes and goes depending on the season. But they say that will totally disappear if we don't do something. They said the polar bear population will de decline. The sea level will rise by 88 centimeters, about seven feet in 2100 if we don't do something. Um, they say we're gonna have increased drought, extreme weather, more hurricanes, more tornadoes, more wildfires, heat waves, all of that, we're gonna get that. And in fact, you, you'll hear in the news when we get a hurricane or a tornado, they said, that's due to climate change, we gotta do something. So they tried to use that to scare us into doing something about that. So we must act now. This is the greatest threat to mankind. So that's what the UN IPC is saying. So what's the reality? Well, here's some of their, what they're saying, a little bit more detail. These are different organizations. I'm not gonna go into all those on the left there. Uh, but basically they're saying, uh, and these, these colors are the different graphs that you see in the middle of that uh, there. And uh, so different organizations have made different predictions, but it goes all the way up to five degrees more by the end of this century. So the, the IPC has put out five reports now. The very first report, they put out this graph on the left, and you can see here, it goes from 1000 AD to uh, 1900 or so, and they do put in this medieval warm period, you know, when, when Greenland was green and it was warmer, it, it was warm in the medieval warm period. But then we also, in the 1600s, we had a small ice age. And so the temperature has gone up and down, and they say, now this is where we are today. So that's history. So then in uh, 2001, the next IPCC report showed this hockey stick. You may have heard about this. <coughs> this is a climate scientist, Michael Manns is his name. He came up with a prediction and said, look at that steep rise in there. That's, you know, he said, look, look it's been pretty even up till now. Modern day, we're, we're burning all fuel, a lot more fuel, fossil fuels, and here the temperature suddenly goes up. That's called the hockey stick. Notice this here seems to disappear. They got rid of that somehow. So that's the first, uh, the, the uh, second, uh, IPCC report. And here's that hockey stick. That's where that name comes from because it just goes a little flat and then sharply up. And so, well, is that true? Well, the original version, uh, which I said was uh, promoted by the IPCC, uh, had this uh, red curve and there, there, the, um, I'm sorry, had the, 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 the uh, the blue curve showing the medieval period. But what did the uh, IPC do? They brought all these temperatures down, okay, with the, uh, the orange now, and that's the hockey stick that they're saying is true. They forget about what really happened in the past. They've adjusted the temperatures. And is, is that reasonable? Well, we'll, we'll talk a bit more of that. And here's another example just recently from uh, you know, 1997 to 2017, we have two different graphs. Um, the, the Met Office in England shows the, these blue temperatures, uh, but then the, the NOAA data shows higher temperatures. How can that be? Two different organizations, two different temperatures, curves there. 
And here's, here's another one here. Again, the, the UK Met um, office. The, you had the, the red here up till 2015. This is closer to reality. But then all of a sudden after that, they stopped with those curves and they adjusted them with these blue curves and notice the blue curve is higher. And you get some spikes there. Why is that? You know, they're making an adjustment because they, they have a, a, um, a message they want to give us saying we need to be concerned about this. Okay, now here's, here's a real curve. It, there's two curves. One is 1999. Okay, they, this is what was published by NASA. Okay, you have to look fast here. 1999, that was the, the black blue curve. And then all of a sudden, NASA comes out with a new one in 2019. What's the difference? Well, notice in the 1999, there's a very high period in about 1936, very hot. And that was the, the Dust Bowl era in the US, very, very hot. So those are what we believe to be true. And then all of a sudden, NASA in 2019 made that disappear and said, look, we're up hotter than we've ever been. This is the hottest year. So there, there's some monkey business going on there. And if you look at the curves for the last uh, uh, 18, 19 years now, you'll see that, yes, it, it, it varies year by year, but basically the average you know, hasn't changed a whole lot. Okay, then looking, looking back to 1973 in the 70s, some of you may remember, for, the, for those of you, or for us that we, we lived in Canada, we had huge uh, snow banks you know, in the 70s. And it really, it really was colder, and the snow was much more prevalent than it is today. And so um, the governor of California at the time, Governor Brown, was very concerned that we're going to go into some kind of a deep freeze, and uh, we're going to have a real problem if we don't do something about this, it's a, it's a panic. Jo take the name John Holdren. He was the a scientist back then, and he also warned about massive cooling going to happen there. Okay, that's the 1970s. Then you go to the 2000s. What happened to the Time magazine? They come out with a warning of global warming. Be worried. Be very worried. 2006. And who promotes that? Uh, governor Brown again. The same Governor Brown. He, he was uh, governor two different times. So he warned us about global cooling. He warned us about global warming. And Holdren is a scientist back then, and he also was an alarmist. But then in, this, in the 70s, um, sorry, the um, 2000, 2010, he was actually a... Um, um, scientist for Obama. And what did he do? Again, he warned about global warming. Same people, just different warnings. So here's just summarizing that. What do we have? Global cooling or global warming? And uh, Governor Brown changed his story. And he warned about uh, drought, uh, having a real drought disaster. So this is sort of summarizing that. Same Governor Brown, 1977, unprecedented California drought caused by global cooling. He changed the story, 2015, unprecedented California drought caused by global warming. Hot, cold, doesn't make a difference. There's always a scare tactic there. And you remember Al Gore made a lot of predictions and almost none of them have come to be. He, back in 2008, he said the polar ice cap will just disappear. And, uh, and here, here's the, uh, uh, in five years. So in 2013, what it'll look like? We got a good North Pole ice cap still. So how does global warming work? Or how, how does the, the Earth w get warmed? And how do it get cooler? Well, that's really controlled by the sun. I mean, the, the heat that warms our earth comes from the sun. That's the only source of heat. And so they can measure that in terms of uh, watts per square meter. That's those numbers that are there. 
And uh, the total coming in is 341, and uh, about 161 of that gets absorbed by the, uh, the surface of the Earth. Some of it is reflected back out, and uh, the other part is reflected off through clouds. And this is the important part. We'll come back to these clouds, because the bigger, the, the uh, uh, thicker those clouds are, uh, the more will be uh, bounced back. And so it comes down you know, in solar radiation and goes back out in infrared radiation. And I won't go through all those numbers, but you, you get the idea. Some heat is absorbed, some is reflected by two different methods. And here, radiation goes back into space. Okay, so that's just the basic picture. There's a lot more to say about that, but uh, I just want to get the, the concept across. Okay, th then what the IPCC says is that warming is caused by humans, and most of that comes from carbon dioxide. That's their claim. And uh, the charter of the IPCC uh, has them looking for um, possible causes of warming due to human activity only. They're not asked to look at warming caused by natural causes, and that's very important. So the man-made um, uh, warming, these are the five major gas categories. Water vapor is the biggest, 95%. Carbon dioxide next, 3.6%. Methane, and et cetera. We're just going to look at carbon dioxide and water vapor. And you'll notice that the, of all the greenhouse gases, these are the percentages. And then the natural part of that, 99%, 999, is natural. A very, very little, little is caused by humans. And the same thing is true for carbon dioxide. You know, 3.5, but by carbon dioxide, uh, but by humans, it's only 0.117%, very small. And yet, th that's what they claim causes global warming that we need to be concerned about. And so th this adds up to all of man-made, up to 0.28%. Um, so th then if you look at the, you can look at this here. This here is, says, uh, you know, you see of all the carbon dioxide, 3.225% of that is man-made. You know, burning fossil fuels and um, other um, human activity. But most of it is natural. Um, so the, the human contribution to greenhouse effect is only 0.28%. But then what makes it worse in this discussion um, is that the UN IPCC takes the water vapor out of, out, out of this discussion. They say that that's, that can't cause much uh, um, global warming. And it turns out you know, the, the human f part of that is, is very, very small. And so the, the uh, net net, if you uh, consider water vapor, uh, you know, carbon dioxide is a 0.117% of the Earth greenhouse effect. Very, very small. And yet that's what they claim causes global warming. So now I'm going to look at 16 different issues and uh, just to set the stage. First of all, climate has always been changing. 2,000 years, you know, this is these, you, you know, the, the peak there and the, the little ice age, you know, that's not uh, a whole lot maybe one degree on average. But there are variations, and this can make a difference, as we see in the medieval period and in the Little Ice Age period. They're very significant. And uh, this is where we are today, supposedly. So the question, and the, here's, yeah. And the, the green is the, um, the um, carbon dioxide, the parts per million of carbon dioxide. Here, and I'm not going to go through all the details, but for those that are interested in this, you know, you can look at this for more details. You'll see the, 
There, there were other warm periods. This is the, the um, 1 BC, 1 AD. And uh, before that, there were also cold periods and warm periods. And uh, we have a warm Roman Empire period and uh, dark ages, more colder. And then we have that medieval warm period and then a l little ice age. And then here we are today. You notice the, it's gone up very fast, come back down, back up. And then the projection is actually that it's going to get colder. And I'll show you why that is. So th these, this is what we've experienced so far. And uh, so th the point is, climate has always been changing. So why are we concerned about the change today? Issue number two, carbon dioxide is required for life. You know, we, we can't, the plants can't live without carbon dioxide. Carbon, the more carbon dioxide there is in the atmosphere, the more uh, food can be produced. The crops are bigger. And sometimes politicians will say, well, we got to get rid of this carbon dioxide in the atmosphere because carbon dioxide is a pollutant. Well, it's not. It's a clean gas. So here's some examples from 1980. To 2007, you'll see that uh, you know corn, rice, and wheat. The the more and more has been produced, and um, um, carbon dioxide has been, has increased over that period of time too. And it, so the the production of food has increased. And here's another way to look at it: going back to 1850, um, th this is the um, uh, carbon dioxide emissions has increased quite a bit, um, but you, you look at the uh, uh, you know the different places here, or the contributions. You'll see the U.S. is pretty large, and uh, you know even India is not as large as we are. China, of course, is increasing quite a bit. Europe is uh, is uh, more. So here here's the the corn yield has increased significantly over that period of time, while carbon dioxide has increased probably a factor of four. Um, number three, science is not settled. Sci scientists, climate scientists do not agree on whether this is a real threat to human beings or not. Science is not settled. Here are some predictions that were made back in uh, um, in the 70s. And again, these names come up. John Holdren, who was Obama's science advisor and uh, worked with the UN. He made these predictions in the you know, 1970s about global cooling and then later uh, global warming. So everything, most of the things that they predicted just have not happened. Uh, the UN overestimated global warming by 2015, all rainforest species will be extinct, extinct, that's what they predicted. Oil will run out by 2015. Well, I think we've got lots of oil to go yet. Arctic Sea will disappear by 2015. That didn't happen. And uh, another um, WAG said, well, a billion people could die from climate change by 2020. Happens to be this year. That was made back in the 70s. So that didn't happen. Here's a bunch of other ones. Um, and it, you know, I'm not gonna read them all, but it's going back to the 1970. Um, it says, we will be in an ice age by 2000, 30 years later. Well, we haven't had that. Global cooling will cause a world war by 2000. Um, Himalayan glaciers will be gone in 10 years. Snow will be, soon be a thing of the past. Our kids won't have any snow. Global warming will cause fewer hurricanes, 2007. 2012, global warming will cause more hurricanes. So which is it? The Arctic will be ice free. So, and then, of course, Gore comes out and says, the science is settled. Don't ask questions, the science is settled. So then here, I remember this, I uh, showed you this graph before, um, and th this is pretty accurate, you know, not, uh, not year by year, but from two, over 2,000 years, and this is where we are now. 
and that's a dotted line because you know this was uh, done a, a few years back. So the, the other thing that people don't note is that we already have had some cooling even in this century. Um, you know, the world carbon use, you know, more coal, oil, and gas, and uh, this is the, the um, metric tons of carbon used, billions of tons, and uh, so quite large. But you'll see, despite that, you know, the temperature has gone up slightly, maybe one degree over 1880 to 1840. Uh, that was a high period, but then for 30 years, it went down. Remember into the 70s, that was a cooling period, and now it's gone back up again. It turns out, if you compare that with the solar activity, it, um, it tracks fairly well. So it does not correlate with the carbon use. Look at all the carbon. No, that, that doesn't follow the carbon, um, the, the amount of carbon used. And uh, this is just another way of looking at it. With this, this is the line of carbon um, yeah, right, right here. Four, we're uh, at four, over 400 now parts per million. But again, carbon's increased, but temperature has increased, decreased, and increased. It's not correlated with the carbon. And uh, here's, here's another one here. Okay, then we, here's, a, I want to show this graph because this shows you the, the conflict between different climate scientists. Um, Michael Mann is the guy that came up with that hockey stiff curve that I showed before. So here's the, he would say back to 1000 AD, the weather changed a little bit, and then all of a sudden, you were burning more fossil fuels. Look at this, big hockey stick. We're, we're really in trouble, it's getting hot. Well, in reality, Tim Ball, who is a Canadian climate scientist, he's, he's been in this business for 50 years, he challenged Michael Mann to that. He said, this is what it's really like. You know, we had the medieval warm period, and then we have a, a little ice age, and a few more here, and we've had a warm period in the 1930s, and yep, we get a little warmer now at the end of uh, uh, th this century here. That's what, that's the reality. So carbon is not causing this, you know. And so Michael or, or Tim Ball actually challenged Michael Mann to say, "Show me the data that supports your curve," and he couldn't. He couldn't uh, produce it, and there was a lawsuit that occurred in that, and uh, Michael Mann lost the lawsuit because he couldn't produce the data that comprised that curve. So a few words about the NIPCC. This is the Non-Governmental International Panel on Climate Change. It's uh, comprised of uh, hundreds of different uh, climate scientists. They contribute to this. They hold annual conventions to, um, and, and produce a lot of papers on this topic of climate change. So here are some of the reports they've published. Uh, they uh, said, nature, not human activity, rules the climate. And uh, th that's one important one. And then uh, the fourth one there, why scientists disagree about global warming. And here's that uh, book here that they wrote. A very, very important book. And here's some of their key findings. Said so there, there really is no consensus between all climate scientists on global warming and climate change, and explains why scientists disagree. Uh, Said so this, it's a difference between the scientific method, which the NIPCC uses, and there's a lot of politics involved in the IPCC. You know, there's a lot of bureaucrats which come up with the IPCC reports, and the the. Um, um, reports that the NIPCC re publishes, it's really science. It's peer-reviewed science. And so uh, th th these are some of the, the key findings. Um, here's a, a um, Washington State, Washington University climate scientist. Um, the the um, Washington State Senate came out with the uh, five warnings, 
saying that, or six, these six warnings. The emissions of greenhouse gas from human activity is the principal cause of climate change. Easterbrook is a climate scientist. He challenged all six of these and showed them where they're wrong. And I won't go into all of them, but the, the point is the politicians, they just don't listen to this. They have a different agenda. Okay, issue number four. Carbon dioxide cannot, <clears throat> cannot drive global warming. There are four possible causes of global warming. Uh, increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, perhaps um, global warming by sunspots or just by the heat coming from the sun. If there's more heat coming, uh, that'd be enough to cause it. Four, third is solar irradiance, and that is uh, uh, a much more likely cause of our global warming because of, uh, I'll, I'll show you some of the curves. And th this is a cloud cover. You remember that, that uh, big diagram I showed with clouds which reflect the heat? And uh, cl increasing cloud cover causes cooling. And I'll, I'll explain each of these a bit now. So first of all, ask the question for carbon dioxide. There's a skeptic's handbook that was written by an Australian, and uh, she found that these four, if, if we are really experiencing warming by uh, man-made causes, we should see these four things. Hot spot warming pattern, uh, we don't see that. Um, we, we should see increased temperatures uh, uh, after carbon. Well, it turns out if you look at the long life, you can see increased temperatures before carbon. It's as if the temperature is causing more carbon in the atmosphere. Temperatures are not rising. Remember, I showed you this curve in the 20 years in the past. You know, it's been pretty flat. And the fourth, um, if you increase the, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, um, the first amount you put in the, in the atmosphere can cause some warming. But the, the more, let's see, um, oh, let, let me just do this one first. It, here's a curve that this is the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere over this period from 1960 to 2020, roughly. And this is the parts per million of carbon dioxide. This is measured in Hawaii, where there's almost no uh, human activity in a certain area. And it has a nice curve. It is increasing in the atmosphere, up and down like that. Um, but what you also notice is that you know, here, 1960, you've got carbon increasing, but temperature going down. And then a section where it's going um, up a little bit, and then another one where it's pretty flat. So the, the, there's no direct correlation between carbon and temperature in the atmosphere. So here's carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. If you start out you know, with 20, 60, 100 um, parts per million, and you add another 20, you, know, you get this much more, and so on. And you can see the more you add of carbon dioxide, the, the less impact it has on temperature. And so here, you know, the pre-industrial 1850 period, uh, 270, and now we're at 540, or sorry, we're not at 5, we're at uh, 420 or so. But um, if we double the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, we're not gonna get a whole lot of increased temperature. So carbon doesn't really impact the temperature much at all. Okay, then uh, total solar irradiation. Uh, this can cause significant fluctuations in the climate. However, global warming by sunspots only, just by the sun, by itself, it doesn't generate, give enough heat to warm what we see. Um, but uh, we do see, when we look at the um, uh, sunspots, uh, coming fr from the sun, that's sun solar activity. The more solar activity um, there is, um, you, you can see the it going up for a while and then going down like that. It seems to be better correlated 
than hydrocarbon, carbon dioxide. So that's something that scientists have noted. And so this total solar irradiance, you know, it does have that um, um, correlation with sunspots, but does not have the correlation with the increasing carbon. Okay, and that's a major, major thing. So here, this is, this is a very significant um, graph. The top one there, you, you'll see, um, let's see, the, the mini ice age, the modern minimum it's called. You'll see that the solar activity was very, very low. And we had an ice age during that period, the, the modern minimum. Okay, and then when you get more sunspots, you know, the temperature uh, increases and so on. And notice where we are today. We are right here. Okay, and if that keeps on going, we get, it's uh, projected that there might be a solar minimum for 50 or 60 years. And if that happens, we're going to get colder weather, not warmer weather. So global cooling may become a non-issue if we really experience that, uh, the minimum there. Okay, and this here, um, this, this is what one scientist came up with. Um, Larry Vardaman, who we've had talk here before too, uh, he, he said that uh, you know, th this is probably the main cause of global warming that we see. And that is caused by the clouds. Uh, in the atmosphere. So the, the more clouds you have in the atmosphere, um, if, if you have an, let me start, if you have an inactive sun, and now there's not many solar uh, sunspots, you're gonna get more cosmic rays coming down from space, um, and that will result in more clouds being formed, and that will cool the Earth. Okay, and that's why you see those low sunspots correlated with the uh, cooling of an Earth. If you have a very active sun and a lot of uh, solar uh, sunspots, and you have a, you know, there's a magnetic wave that comes out of the sun, it results in fewer clouds because there's fewer cosmic uh, rays coming through, and that results in a hotter Earth. Uh, hotter Earth. So that's, that's probably the most prominent theory that scientists uh, have come up with. And here you see some of that correlation between those. Okay. Um, okay, I think I've said most of this. And the, yeah, this here um, you know, is predicted, and this is predicted by NASA themselves, um, that this will be one of the weakest uh, solar minimums coming up here, number 25. And uh, that will result in more global cooling if that really comes to be. And another cause is the oceans. I mean, remember the, the Earth is covered 70% by water and the oceans are very, very deep. And uh, there is some, we can measure the average temperature of the ocean surface. And that, that has decreased over, um, actually it has increased over time, but it has increased very, very slightly. Okay, and here's some of the uh, um, measurements by this climate scientist, Roy Spencer, who also is a uh, uh, part of the NIPCC. He does not believe we have a global warming problem. And, but he says the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, that's the ocean, the, the movement of the ocean uh, is causing some changes in the weather and in global warming, but small. Okay, and here's a, here's a curve, the, sur the surface temperature record. You can see from the 18, 1980 to 2005, um, and, and you've got two major causes of this. One is the El Nino, which is a, a, a warm, um, or a warming of the ocean, and then the, the La Nina, which is a cooling. And so you, you can see the difference going um, 
over the years. Okay, now here, so here's the, the only uh, increase is measured to be about, uh, over these 10 years, is 0 0.023 degrees centigrade per decade. So if you multiply that over 10 years, that's only 0.23 centigrade. So this is not having a whole large impact on our temperature. Okay, th number seven. You remember the, in, in uh, December 2015, uh, many nations signed the Paris Climate Agreement. Said we gotta do something about the, the warming temperature and uh, we're gonna agree to reduce carbon um, dioxide emissions and uh, many nations signed up and uh, the US did as well, but you'll remember that President Trump withdrew us from that because he could see the fallacy of doing this because it, it requires trillions of dollars to implement. Even Al Gore agrees that at, to reduce the temperature by uh, 0.3 degrees Fahrenheit by 2100, it would cost between 60 five and 132 trillion dollars. Huge amount of money to do that. And that assumes that we can do it. And uh, where does that money come from? It comes from the rich nations. And why do 195 nations sign up for it? Because most of them are poor. And if the US is gonna give out all this money and some other European countries, well, why not? You know, so it's, it's, it doesn't work. And, uh, Trump saw that. Um, here are some of the agreements that, uh, um, you know, their projections was to uh, keep the temperature increase less than two degrees centigrade from where it is today. And um, it would, it would uh, well, it, it defines how much money is needed for all that, but it's I'm not gonna go through all those pieces. If you're interested, you can always look at the slides online later on. The other key point that, uh, you know, why um, the U.S. doesn't want to do this because China, uh, they're not going to sign to do this until 2030. In other words, they can, they can build as many coal plants as they want till 2030 and emit as much carbon dioxide as they want because they're a developing country. And, but the U.S. has to start to decrease. So it's not a very equal agreement. Uh, fortunately, the U.S. Is, is actually decreasing its carbon dioxide emissions anyway, slightly. Number eight, climate models come up by UN IPCC are not realistic. Here are some of the initial models they came up with, UN IPC. I won't go over all these, but they're saying there's a range of models uh, which will get you up to five to six degrees more from 2000 to 2100. And so the worst case is five or six, and uh, best estimate is about three. And here are some more specifics. You'll see the um, different time frames where the IPCC came up with something. You'll see the Hansen 1988 First one was all the way up here, okay? And this is only from 2000 to 2050 or so. So that's well on the way to five or six degrees. And then simple model would get you a very low one. So th these models, they don't work. If you look at what the UN has done, here, here's the models. The, this has 102 different models making different assumptions that they're showing here in all these different curves, and I'm not gonna go through all those. The middle range of all those 102 is here. So we're going up, um, you know, 0.9 or so from, from zero by that time frame. let's say one, one degree centigrade. Um, so this is the average of all those, but if you measure what we're, the temperature over this period of time, 75 to 2025, uh, you know, here we are now, we're not there yet, um, you're, you're only up by 0 
So the models just don't work. Issue number nine. Um, the measurements you make of temperature around the world uh, depend on where you place weather stations and what kind of weather stations you use. The, one of the big issues is that, you know, obviously um, 150 years ago, th there weren't that many uh, uh, people in the world. Now we have huge cities. So now we have this issue of, uh, I mean, if you have a, a temperature measurement in the, in the rural area today, you know, 29 degrees centigrade, say, uh, there's no, no housing. And then you get into the, a large city, it can go up as much as four degrees. You know, because uh, you know, here, here you have um, you know, an herbal sprawl. If you have a weather station here, out in the uh, rural area, still in the rural area, but it's, civilization is creeping up. Now it's in the middle of this. So if you have a measurement here of uh, 29, uh, when it was standing by itself, when it gets surrounded by cities and pavement and sidewalks, it's going to go up. So if you're using the same weather stations um, to measure your, your temperature, obviously it's going to go up. But it's not due to um, more carbon dioxide. It's, uh, this is the real cause of it. And uh, these are, they've done some measurements at airports, for example, where there's a lot of paving. And uh, you'll see there's, uh, they did some measurement where it's gone up a, a degree or so from uh, over 15 years. But if you project that out over a century, you can get as much as 14 degrees if you believe those curves. So you gotta be very careful what you use as measuring stations. And here, here's a biggie. Uh, this is an actual um, measurement from 1950 um, to 2000. You have this many weather stations you know, in the US. And then over time, you, you have fewer and fewer down to uh, you know, 6,000, you know, half. So, the, the temperature, you know, goes up. Why is that? Well, it depends on which temperature stations you threw out. If you throw out the, the rural um, measurements, they're all low, so of course you're going to get a higher um, temperature. So this is a, kind of a, a phony measurement, but you, it has a big impact, you know, from 11.5 to 9.5 big impact. So you have to adjust for those. And uh, that leads to all kinds of guesswork. And then it, lately, from 1979 on, we're using satellite uh, measurements, satellite-based measurements. And they can be more accurate because they're not, they're, they're not in urban areas. I mean, they're all in the atmosphere. And uh, so you can get better measurements that way. Okay, number 10. Uh, remember, Gore said, if we don't do something, polar bears will disappear. Well, at the time he um, said that in the 60s, there were 5,000 polar bears. Today, there's 25,000. They didn't disappear. Issue number 11, the sea levels are not, are, are rising. Uh, they predicted they're rising. Um, yeah, so, so here, uh, the actual uh, sea level rise is very, very small. They, I mean, they projected uh, 120 centimeters, and in actual fact here, we've just got a few centimeters measurements. So it is increasing, but it's not increasing anywhere near what it was predicted. Here's a, a better one here. This is, I think this is measure, measured in Germany. Um, and you'll see from um, 1840 to uh, 2015, you know, very, very small, 0 0.11 millimeter per year. And here is the carbon curve 
the, the amount of uh, carbon dioxide uh, parts per million, up to four, a little over 420 there. So it's gone up significantly, but the sea level hasn't changed much at all. Number 12, the Arctic Sea is not disappearing. Um, this curve here shows that. 2012, here's the, the uh, size of the ice cap in the uh, Arctic. And here it is about the, about the same time in August much, much larger. So it's, it's not disappearing. And wh why, do people, why do you see news stories saying, hey, our ice is disappearing in the Arctic? That's because in the summer, the ice coverage doesn't decrease. And they say, oh, look, at it. it's, it's fallen by the, these many tons of ice. We're, we're in trouble. So it keeps on going down. And then when the fall comes, it comes back up again. And these are curves from 2015 to, um, from 2004 to 2015, and those measurements, they're all within a certain range. They vary, of course, from year to year, but nothing to be concerned about. And this is uh, another one. Okay, then we come to a big um, concern, and that is weather extremes. Every time you have a, a, a dry period, every time you have tornadoes, hurricanes, um, typhoons, forest fires, it's because of climate change. So we better do something about it. Well, what's the reality? Uh, here, going back to uh, 800 AD, uh, here's, here's the, what's been measured. The, um, the, the red is dry, so it uh, you know, could have drought then but the blue is much wet. Well, look at in the past, from 800 to uh, you know, 1400 or so, we got a lot of uh, dry. Here we are, uh, here in 1900, uh, there was a dry period, and then here we are today with another one, but small compared to these ones here. So, uh, you, you can't say that they're man-made. Uh, I mean, we weren't driving too many cars and burning fossil fuels back here, and we're, we are burning a lot right now. And here, if you look at 1900 to 2000, you'll see that the average percentage hasn't changed a whole lot. Okay, then storms, hurricanes. Well. Um, you know, we've had some bad hurricanes, um, but if you measure the number of hurricanes that you have in any one decade, you'll see from the uh, 1880 till today, um, they, they haven't changed a whole lot. I mean, they, these are the ones, uh, category three, four, and five hurricanes. There, yeah, there were some bad ones in, uh, I remember Katrina was a category five, and it's in there. Uh, there's one back here in 1910, um, but it's, it's, not, it's not going up like that. Um, and here's the, the top nine, uh, the dead, deadliest hurricanes over the last 200 years or so. And it does have Katrina in here, a number of fatalities. Um, fairly high, but not the highest by any means. You know, that's some real, back in 1900. So you, you can't say that these are, these numbers are not increasing with time with hurricanes. And then you have tornadoes, same kind of thing, tornadoes um, of uh, strength three or more from 1970 to 2015. They're actually going down quite a bit. You know, the number of, of tornadoes. Um, this is another one just going down. And if you look at the, from uh, 1954 to 1985, the average per year, 55. And, uh, but lately from 86 to 2018, it's down to 33.8. The trend is going down. So when, when stories come out and say, oh, look at these tomatoes, we better do something about global warming because 
but the, the facts don't support it. And then here's uh, one heat waves. <clears throat> um, th this is a heat wave. It, it measures usually the, it, if you have a number of days over 90 degrees, how many days, how many times do you have that in a period of time? You'll see that there's a peak back to 1934, 36 was really high. We haven't had one of those since, you know, back in the 1930s, the, the Dust Bowl period, real high. And this is another one here. Um, you know, we're, we're not, but here we are today, you know, the trend is still going down. We're not way up here, 1934. You know, we haven't reached those numbers. Um, yeah, this is more of, the, more of the same. So here's another example of data uh, manipulation. Um, so they, they, they uh, what they do, see the US temperature is measured here, and you'll see that the, it's, it's going up a little bit over uh, that period, but then they adjust them. And how do they adjust them? You know, that's not understood. That can be a cherry picking of the, of the data to get that kind of a curve. See, these, these numbers here, this uh, temperature here is higher than this one. And in reality, it never was close to that one. So you gotta be careful how they come up with these curves. This is another one that people bring up, um, the frequency of US wildfires. You know, I'm sure you've seen it with all the California wildfires. This is the worst it's ever been. Um, and uh, you know, you can see here, I mean, it's, yeah, it varies from year to year. Um, this, this year, 2013, was uh, you know, below normal, but then some other ones were above. So here, and that was just going back to 19, uh, let's see. In 1985 or so. Here, here is, uh, you know, if if you get a story which says, look at the number of, of forest fires, the wildfires that has increased significantly. What do they do? They show you this curve starting about here. Look at look at how much it's increasing. They don't go and show this here. Back in the early 1900s, it was much much worse, much worse. And uh, here's another total acreage burned again. Um, they'll, they'll show you this year, but they have to show you the whole picture. And uh, trends in ocean temperature, you know, not much change there. Um, snow, snow coverage, you'll see that the snow coverage is varies from year to year, but it's actually average is increasing somewhat. And uh, here's, again, snow mass. Um, again, the, the red is uh, today, this year, but the, the blue one is the average over a number of years. Okay, a number of years, and the dot line in the middle of that is the average of that. So we're, we're not out of, uh, you know, we, we maybe have more snow than uh, usual, but, uh, not a lot. Okay, so number 14, the, we have to recognize that the UN IPCC charter limits it to identifying only human causes of global warming. Here's what their charter says. The IPCC charter to assess um, on a comprehensive, objective, open, transparent basis, the scientific, technical, social, information relevant to understanding the scientific basis of risk of human-induced climate change and its potential impacts and options for adaptation and mitigation. So what they, they focus on only things that could be uh, um, caused by humans, they don't consider the natural. I mean, I mean the, the sun and the oceans and all that. And so that's why we have this uh, distorted picture of what's really happening. 
Um, as I said, there have, been, there have been five IPCC reports so far, and uh, the uh, <clears throat> uh, and I, I just give some highlights of each why they're so different. But they um, note that they increase the confidence of the of the numbers that they have in the reports. They're up to 90 to 95 percent, but I, I would say that's bogus. You know, there's still so much variation, so much misunderstanding yet. Um, okay, number 15, this is a very important one. UN IPC officials admit that its real agenda is to redistribute wealth. And here he says it. We, the UN IPC, redistribute de facto the world's health by climate policy. One has to free oneself from the illusion that international climate policy is environmental policy. This has almost nothing to do with environmental policy anymore. So the, this, it's bureaucrats, you know, setting policy based on poor science. That's the way I see it. Okay, the last one, number 16, you may have heard uh, both, both Obama and Holdren and uh, Kerry have said this, 97% of climate scientists agree that global warming, it is warming and it's mostly caused by human activity. 97% of climate scientists say that, that's what they say. How do they get that number? Well, here's, uh, here, here's exact quote from them. Um, probably the most widely repeated claim in the debate with global warming is that 97% of scientists agree. In other words, they, it's a consensus. You gotta accept it. This claim is not only false, but its presence in the debate is an insult to science. They do not use science to come up with that. And uh, Obama and Kerry have used that to uh, convince people to work within the UN IPC on climate change. There's seven studies done by different people on different areas, and uh, they all come up with numbers that are greater, a percentage greater than 90. 90 plus percent of scientists agree that we got a problem. So they come up with these two key conclusions. They agree that humans are responsible for climate change, um, and the greater the climate expertise among those surveyed, the higher the consensus on human-caused global warming. Let's just look at one of them. Um, yeah, this one has the figures. So they, they sent out a survey to um, more than 13, 14,000 people um, well, 10,000, they received 3,000 back. Of those, there were 77 were climate scientists, 75 climate scientists um, that agreed to question number two. Is, you know, the temperature is increasing and most of the global warming is due to global warming. So 75 out of 77, Multiply that out, you get 97%. That's how they come up with it. So, for example, I wouldn't fit in that category. I mean, I'm, I'm a scientist and I, I know how to do science. And uh, so they're, they're not taking my input into consideration and thousands of others into consideration. So then with conclusions, uh, the reason secular scientists think Earth's climate is unstable is their computer models. I showed you those computer models, they showed up to five degrees by 2100. They're just not accurate. All the measurements are just not there. And that's mostly because they assume there's a, a, a um, positive feedback system in the earth. In other words, if you keep on adding carbon dioxide, all of a sudden it's gonna just gonna skyrocket. But in reality, as we've seen partly here, the, the Earth is really has a negative feedback, so if it gets too far out, it'll, it'll come back down again. And we've seen that in history. I mean, there's a negative feedback there. Second reason is fraudulent uh, political research. 
They use surface temperatures more than satellite temperatures because you know surface temperatures can be less anchored than satellite. They cherry pick data to support their conclusions, and they even manipulate data that uh, you know has been published 20 years ago, and they've changed it for some other reasons. And that, those are the major reasons why they consider um, you know climate science is unstable. What the news media does not tell you is there has been no global warming in 19 years. I showed you that curve. Global warming from 1978 to 1998 has been replaced by global cooling. Remember, it went from cooling to warming. The Arctic and Arctic ice sheet is growing, not melting. Uh, we see sea level rising at about seven inches per century, not 20 feet that they project. Four of the f past five years have set snowfall records. And it, actually, if you look at the news today, and there's snow in the pass already in, in Highway 90, and uh, there, is, there is more snow falling. Wyoming and other states have more snow than uh, they've had in years. So, and they also, of course, tell you that, that um, well, carbon dioxide cannot cause global warming. They're not gonna tell you that. Severe storms are not more frequent than normal. You saw some of the curves. And the oceans are not acidic, and the sea level is not rising as quickly as they say it will. So what should we do? What should we as the church do? Uh, well, going back to the first slide, I quoted those three verses, in particular Genesis 8.22. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold, heat, summer, winter, day and night shall not cease. Seasons will continue. We don't have to worry about that. So we need to commit to a view in the world from God's perspective and understand and rely on scripture as a foundation for life. And uh, part of that, of course, is to test everything that you're told. Don't just take it, because, because it came from a scientist doesn't mean it's true. Um, we need to use the Bible to understand the world and evaluate all problems and help inform other believers, promote the truth, and oppose false beliefs with gentleness and uh, respect. In conclusion, the UN IPC climate change models have failed us miserably. And as a, as a scientist, I mean, if the model doesn't work, change your model until it fits. But they don't do that. There is no significant global warming for the last 19 years. Sea levels only increased by uh, 1.5 millimeter per decade. Man-made causes are insufficient of all the four causes. The carbon dioxide component of the atmosphere is just too small to make a difference. There are three natural causes which should be considered, and they're more credible. The sun alone, all scientists agree there's not enough energy that comes from the sun to um, make that change. But if the variation in the sun with the sunspots, which result, they, Increasing sunspots result in um, less cosmic radiance coming down there to the Earth does explain a lot of the variation in the temperature that we see. And then the ocean movements also explain some of that. And finally, the, the Paris Climate Agreement that the U.S. has opted out of is not a solution because I, I believe we really don't have a problem we need to you know, take care of the earth. We need to take care of polluting elements, but we don't have a serious global warming catastrophe coming to be. So climate change is not a crisis. Well, let's not panic. And with that, I'll bring it to a conclusion. There is my, my website if you're interested in more. Um, I've got all, all of my lectures are around here. This is... Um, refuting global warming alarmism. I've got a large file there which has a lot of the technical references supporting what I just presented here. And uh, the other thing, you know, some people may ask, well, wh why do you cover this in apologetics? Well, I look at, at global warming um, and evolution in the same way. In both cases, secular man believes that they can improve man and they believe that they can in, 
um, control the weather and the climate. And uh, if we just spend the money, we can just have a nice climate all the time. It's just not going to happen. And as we know, science does not support evolution, and science does not support global warming um, alarmism. So if you have any questions, you can email them to me. And I speak to the audience, and we'll see this later. Uh, feel free to uh, uh, contact me through my email. So thank you for your attention.